Okay, having made the argument in favor of having a security architecture, let me now take the counter position. What happens if you don't have a security architecture? Well, the, uh, there are going to be uh, well, hopefully, there, there's going to be an increase in user uh, access requirements. That means your business is growing. You got more people. You got more resources to deal with. And if you don't have a security architecture, that is going to make it much more difficult for you to effectively and quickly... Uh, address the increased needs to to provide for the access to have the the tools in place or the guidance to put tools in place that will provide access to new resources that will determine the access requirements for new users that will determine how we are to validate the new users and, and bring them on board, give them, provide them with the resources that they need to do their job as quickly and effectively as possible. And that is... Uh, I mean, we're going to have new types of users. We've, we've just gone through the... the pandemic and that has made a wholesale and apparently ongoing change in the way we work the the employees that we have um the uh teleworking concept as it was known 30 or 40 years ago um seems to have finally come to back pass with what are now being referred to as remote workers and uh, I'm seeing an awful lot of advertising for positions, and the companies know in order to get uh, the uh, type of, of people that they want, that they have to accept remote work. Uh, and, you know, you, you never used to see that on a job ad, and now it's all, you know, it's there. You know, they specify if they want it on site, if it's remote, if it's a hybrid situation. Uh, and so we've, you know, we've got new, uh, new concerns in regard to providing access. We may not, you know, ever physically see these pe people. You know, we may have uh, hired them simply on the basis of Zoom interviews and hopefully background checks. Uh, so we need to to address all of those things. Uh, and and you know, it, again. The costs associated with all of this and with the changes that are being undertaken, um, it's it's going to be much more manageable. We, we can control the costs much better if we know what we're doing, if we have the guidance from a security architecture and understand what it is that we really need. Um, the... Uh, uh, the access points, the... Uh, the fact that, you know, we're, we're now having an awful lot of people coming in over the internet. Um, I, I mean, remote work might use, uh, might formerly have been dial-up, where at least we controlled the modems and, and we could identify with caller ID, you know, who was calling from where. Um, now, we can't do that. Um, with the internet, everybody is, lives next door to everybody. And you have no idea where anybody is coming from. Um, you do not know, uh, unless you put specific controls in place, whether or not they're coming in over a VPN. And therefore, whether uh, traffic and communications with these people uh, may be susceptible to eavesdropping by others. So we need to, to address that. Um, and then there's uh, consumer complaints. You know, um, 
issues of privacy uh, are becoming increasingly important and and we have different regulations it's not just the the user complaints but we have to um, make sure that we are in full compliance with uh, the regulations that governments have uh, put in place with regard to privacy and and so we you know and uh, different governments because of course you know we may have uh, customers, clients, partners in other parts of the world where uh, they are subject to different regulations. We have to make sure that we understand all of this and that it is covered uh, in our security architecture. Our architecture can give us guidance in that regard. Um, the, the different business units and, and particularly, you know, information technology who are the, the ones directly dealing with so much of this may not have a, a full understanding of the compliance requirements, the, the regulatory requirements, um, and, uh, you know, the issues of, of security. Uh, you know, they are the technical people, but they... And, and in some cases, the, the business people, they understand those parts of the business. But they, uh, you know, we are the, the security specialists. And, and we have to be able to use the uh, documents that we have provided. And the policy and the architecture is definitely a part of it to address um, to them what they have to do. Um, what the requirements of the the business are not just you know we've put up these rules but this is what the company needs you to do uh to make sure that um we are dealing with this stuff properly and uh new types of commerce i mean you know e-commerce and uh, all the related business models that go along with that, it's not that old. And so, you know, there are changes uh, that are going to be coming along and, and come along with the changes in technology all the time. At the moment, uh, big furor over artificial intelligence as I'm recording this. And people are worried about intellectual property that is being used to train the large language models, um, issues of uh, privacy as to whether or not people who are using those tools are uh, having their queries and prompts uh, uh, available to others um, and, and possibly becoming part of the uh, language model itself. Um, uh, so many aspects of of these areas and, and the changing technologies. And I've mentioned, you know, quantum computing. There are going to be changes to technology. There are constant changes in technology. It's changing all the time. And if we have a proper security architecture that understands the requirements, then and only then can we effectively and quickly, quickly enough in a very rapidly changing environment, address the changing needs and requirements that the business has.